Welcome, everyone, and thank you very much for allowing me to host this uh, webinar today around a topic that I am super passionate about. As mentioned already, my name is uh, Jesper Fransen, and I am the Global Expansion Lead uh, for Twill. I come with a background for around 10 years within the logistics industry, where I've had the pleasure of working with everything from ocean freight to air freight, larger supply chain solutions, project cargo, yeah, and, um, and the list goes on. But for the past uh, two years, I've been working for Twill, which is a uh, Maersk innovation and which is also very much in line with the topic that we are going to talk about today, which is, of course, the digital logistics experience. The four topics that I'm going to deep dive into today, you have them here on your screen. So we're going to talk about what is digital logistics and how does it actually work? We're going to look at uh, what is out there, meaning some of these digital, digital, digital lo providers and what solutions that they can offer you. And we, of course, going to look at the benefits of working with such a digital partner and what also to be aware of before you're choosing one. And last but not least, uh, I'm trying to cut down on, uh, on the number of slides, and I thought that I was actually going to show you um, how a digital logistic uh, solution can look like by giving you a small uh, tour of the, the Twill solution that we have uh, within Musk. But first of all, let uh, allow me to, to set the scene a bit. So especially around the question, what is digital logistics? Right now, there are many opinions around uh, what is actually digital logistics. So if you do a little Google online search and uh, you look up what is mm -hmm. digital logistics, you will uh, most likely find uh, many variety of answers. Are you digital because you have an online platform? Are you digital because you are a native digital company? But what I've done is that I've inserted a quote here to the right, which I believe uh, is pretty close to the answer that I would have been given. So any company who uses less manual intervention on calls, emails, and is able to automate as much exchange of information in a single transaction cycle from pickup to delivery that is a digital solution. But in order to paint a little picture around what it actually is, I want to draw some, uh, some parallels to some of the other industries that have uh, already gone through a digital disruption. So if you look at uh, the column here to the left, you have a few uh, companies within the hotel business, within the media, and also the travel business. Some of them you might already uh, recognize um, from, uh, from your daily life. But I want to draw a little comparison to, uh, to, uh, to Uber. So Uber has uh, disrupted uh, the taxi industry within uh, many countries. And the way Uber has done so has not been changing the actual industry by itself. So nothing has really changed uh, from the way uh, you are uh, doing your, um, your taxi uh, today. So there's still a driver involved. There's still a car that needs to come and pick you up. All of these things still happens uh, the same way as it have done uh, previously. But the way Uber have disrupted the industry is by providing a completely new customer experience where they have put ease and the simplicity as the main focus of disrupting the industry. So you don't have to go to the sidewalk anymore and wait for a taxi that uh, may or may not stop or call up a, a central line that will send the taxi within uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. You now have the control to uh, use your tablet or your mobile phone, figure out where is the nearest Uber, and also track how far it is until it will arrive at your place. And that comparison is uh, pretty much what we also see now in the logistics sector. With the new kits on the blocks, as you see here in the middle, that is exactly what they are trying to do in the logistics sector as well, actually putting the customer experience at the driving seat of these disruptions. Then let's have a look at some of these new players. So you can see here I've categorized them in, uh, in two different boxes. We still have the established logistics provider. Uh, some of these brands you, uh, you might already know, they have been around for a long time. 
But what is also categorizing them is that they are known to invest quite heavily in digital solutions. So these players who has established brands within the, the, the industry, they can offer you both a old traditional analog experience and they also now being able to offer you a digital solutions. Of course, these digital solutions uh, can look uh, different, but uh, what is most categorized with these brands is, of course, they already have a global network. They have many years of experience within the logistics industry already. They have strong buying power uh, because of their size, of course. And already they are able to offer you, uh, I would say, all your logistics services uh, that you might need. They will have a solution for you. Whether it's analog or whether it's digital, that is, of course, the question. Then on the right side, I've added a few of the new uh, uh, digital innovators. Uh, there's many, many more out there. I think uh, I'm seeing new ones uh, pretty much every week popping up. But the, the ones you see here uh, is, is some of the ones who have been around for the longest time. This company has, uh, has not been around for more than uh, 10 years. Some of them are quite young. I think if you uh, take Flexport, as you see here, as an example, those are who have been categorized as the pioneers um, who have really paved the way for, for new digital innovators. They have created awareness and they have also gained enough traction when it comes to volume to actually say these digital innovators, they are in it uh, for the long run. And what categorized these innovators is, of course, that they, they come with um, new ideas, they come with a new mindset, they come with a business case of putting customer experience, simplicity, and the ease of actually moving a container from A to B. They come with the uh, fundings from the outside the industry, so many of these companies have, uh, have backup of funding, and also what they're doing is that in order to expand as fast as possible, because they are quite new, they are using third-party providers. So they're actually using established uh, companies within the industry to help them partner up with them in order to move the containers from A to B and being able to offer certain uh, things such as custom clearance, trucking, and what else uh, is needed uh, to move a, car, a container from A to B. So you still have two options. You have the more established the players in the field that is uh, betting on digital solutions. And you now have a variety of these new digital innovators uh, who, uh, who brings uh, a little bit uh, new creativity to the industry, new solutions that uh, we might uh, haven't seen before in the industry. So before choosing a partner, of course, take into consideration what is the most important thing for you. Is it having a reliable logistic network, uh, many trade lanes, many years of experience, making sure that the, the, the knowledge is there? Or potentially explore uh, these uh, fast developing uh, new uh, innovative uh, digital players who can offer uh, potentially new features, new creative ideas, open up doors that uh, you cannot get from uh, some of the, let's say, um, normal players that we have currently in the industry. But when choosing a digital partner, there's of course some things that uh, we need to pay attention to as well. So despite uh, opening up a lot of doors, having an online platform that is accessible, having a lot of tools that makes it much easier for, for you as a customer to navigate in, uh, in international trades, there's of course still a few things that we need to pay attention to. So whether you are an analog player or whether you are a logistic digital player, we still operate in the same industry, meaning that we still face some of the same challenges. So despite having an online platform and despite branding yourself being very digital and being automated, you as a customer, of course, also have to pay attention to some of these things. And I've noted down a few things that I would like to highlight um, that you need to take into consideration. So first of all, you need to identify what is your exact needs. As mentioned before, not all of these new uh, providers can offer all services, not all trade lanes. Um, so figure out exactly what is the level of expertise you need, uh, what is the features you need, and what is the services you need. That is the key 
uh, before uh, choosing a player, of course. How trustworthy and what is the reputation of these providers? So as mentioned before, we do have a, a lot of uh, new players popping up. I see new names, new logos, new brands popping up on a weekly basis. Um, and that means, of course, that uh, in order to move your cargo, they need to partner up with somebody who can actually perform the services. Um, so the network that you see behind the scenes, that is, of course, uh, where you need to figure out, is this digital player reliable? Who is actually moving the cargo? How is their internal setup? Can I trust them when, uh, when they explain to me how they are uh, considered to move my container from one warehouse to another? Data is uh, one thing that is very, very important to, uh, to take into consideration. So being uh, digital and being automated, that requires, of course, data. If you want to be fully digital and you want to be fully automated, you need data in order to transfer information, streamline the data, uh, and, and avoid as much manual intervention as possible. So the data that you see on the platform, is that reliable? Is that up to date? Where is it coming from? Is it manual updated? How can I trust the data that I see here? When I see the ETA is on the 10th of July, I need to make sure that that is also feasible. And that, of course, is something that you need to benchmark a bit around because uh, that is uh, very, very different from, uh, from, from player to player. Prices. Of course, it's a more, uh, very important thing. Uh, most of these platforms will uh, offer you either an instant price on their platform or they will at least uh, give you the option to request a quote online. When you see these prices online, pay attention to the full amounts. So uh, make sure that the price you are getting, the price you consider to book on, is also included all the items that you really want to uh, to have in your uh, your booking so make sure there's no hidden fees pay attention to any disclaimer that is put anywhere and make sure that uh, at the end of the day the price you booked for is also the one you are getting on your invoice at the end of the shipment and as we also talked about last but not least of course uh, the services so uh, despite branding uh, of being digital and being uh, automated there's still a lot of, uh, let's say, manual uh, work in certain areas that is uh, still feasible in order to provide data, in order to provide the reliable service, in order to in give you the information that you need uh, in the time that there's always uh, also promised to you. That is important to also challenge. So when you say you will get an update within 24 hours, is that actually also what is, is happening? The last here is uh, probably the most important one to, to mention uh, of all of them. That is how you handle exception cases. So uh, luckily in the industry world, most shipments uh, flow accordingly. And for those shipments who doesn't go exactly as planned, you need to benchmark on how fast they are to handle these exception cases. How proactive are these digital players actually? Are they using uh, digital tools to uh, alert you up front? And also, do they have enough experience to handle these cases uh, that is occurring? And that can be overbooked vessels, it can be uh, delays in trucking, it can be custom clearance, it can be many things. And here, this is actually where the players can shine. Uh, most of uh, these players can offer pretty much the same features, the platforms, all of them uh, looks the same, but the way they handle exception cases, this is here that the judgment day will come. You will get a thumbs up if you handle it well, or you will get a thumbs down if you didn't handle it as, uh, as expectation. To highlight some of these uh, things, you can look here on the right, I've inserted some facts to state uh, what I just mentioned. So uh, we did a little uh, testing here, or uh, there was a study done of some of these platforms. And you can see here 90% uh, of the platform surveyed who said uh, they could provide in instant uh, online quotation, only 90% was available to actually provide that. So despite branding themselves saying we can do an online quote, only 90% of these platforms actually could do so. And the same goes for uh, quotation. So when they promised a quotation and a price within 24 hours, 
91% of them, uh, or sorry, 81% of them actually didn't manage to fulfill that uh, 24 hours turnaround. Some of them didn't even reply at all. So uh, a platform might be good, but there's also something uh, behind the scenes that needs to be done in an automated way uh, before we can, can trust them. And last but not least, when it comes to prices, remember to benchmark the prices and make sure that everything is included in the price you are getting. The comparison that you see here is based on the, the, the Shanghai Container Freight Index, which is the average price of a container. And the benchmark you can see here, which was done, uh, goes all the way up to 230% higher than the average price and f almost 40% lower than the average price. So it's very difficult still to compare the prices uh, with each other because there are so many different varieties still out there. All right, that was a little bit of uh, information that I wanted to give you. But in order to uh, show you how this actually looks like in, in real life, I wanted to give you a, a small tour of the, the Twill solution. And uh, for the purpose of this webinar, I've uh, created a demo environment of the Twill platform. And that also has a small disclaimer. That is, of course, that everything you see in here is, uh, is pure dummy data. So uh, some of the timings and the information might look a bit strange, but this is purely an environment where we can play around and we can demo for you the functionalities that the, that Twill can offer. And before going into the, the Twill platform, I also wanted to highlight, of course, that um, now we have the option in the, to show you the, the platform here uh, in, in, a de in a demo version. But it is really simple to explore out there. So Twill is only one of the solutions that we have. I mentioned some of the other ones uh, earlier. And uh, what all of these solutions have in common is, of course, that they have a simple way of uh, creating a profile, logging on to their platform, and then you can explore all their uh, opportunities and features. So for example here, the way you log in to the Twill platform is uh, pretty simple. You insert your email address and your password if you have a profile. If you don't, it's easy to create one. It will only require your email, a password, your first name and your last name. And then you are in. So if you log in to the Twill platform, the first page that you will see is the landing page here. So as a customer, you will land on your shipment tab here. If you scroll down, now I have a lot of uh, shipment already ongoing. We will deep dive into some of these shipments uh, on a later point. Before showing you how easy it is to actually place a booking uh, here on Twill, I wanted just to uh, quickly uh, give you a little uh, insight on the, what we call the company profile. So each company have their own company profile. They can have multiple users, which means I as an individual can uh, set my own settings. But if we look at the company profile, in here, we of course have a little information about the company itself. But you as a customer can now start creating your own partner portfolio, meaning that all the players that you are dealing with uh, on a daily basis, that could be your suppliers that you are uh, buying things from, or your buyers uh, that is buying something uh, from you. So in here, you can start adding them simply by clicking on a plus button, insert a few details here in the columns, and then we'll, it will give you a new supplier or a buyer to your portfolio. There are some features in here that is uh, also worth mentioning. So if you have suppliers sitting in other countries that is usually doing the, the bookings for you, you have instructed them to book to a certain uh, carrier or a certain forwarder whenever the cargo is ready. So you don't really do much uh, when it comes to placing the booking. What you can do is you can actually authorize your supplier to place booking on your behalf simply by authorizing them to book meaning that they will now get an invitation from Twill where they can create their own profile, they can set up their own system on the Twill platform, and when the cargo for you is ready, they can go into the Twill platform, they can place a booking, and you as a customer will receive an automated notification saying that your partner, 
in China has now placed a booking to you on Twill. Here are the details. Here are the price you need to pay. And you simply need to confirm and acknowledge that that is also as per agreement. So once shipper pay and once uh, place a booking and once customer acknowledge, this is when we will convert a booking uh, here on Twill and start executing uh, when it comes to, uh, to all the formalities that need to be taken care of. And the same thing goes with the warehouse. So warehouses is uh, your uh, warehouses, either it can be your suppliers warehouses or it can be your own warehouses. And um, it is basically your pickup places and final delivery places. And the reason why I wanted to mention this um, is because you're going to need it there as well in your, your booking flow. So if you wanted uh, to create a new uh, warehouse for a new supplier, you can easily add the details here. And that will be now created in your uh, company profile when it comes to uh, pickup places or delivery places. If you go back to the shipment tab, let's start up a new booking. So you can see here, it should be quite intuitive that uh, in order to start a booking, we click on this big blue button. Now what we can do is uh, we can either choose if we are going to export or we are going to import. Today I'm going to export. And when you choose from, you can choose either from a port or a warehouse. So you remember that I already inserted some warehouses uh, previously in my company profile. So if I insert my uh, warehouse in Ningbo, I put the uh, port of uh, loading uh, Ningbo. And I want to ship to my warehouse in uh, Bristol, but it goes via the port of loading in Felixstowe. Over at Cargo tab, I can say I want a few containers. And the date that the cargo is ready is next Monday. Then when I push on the search button, I will get to my next tab here. Then you can see if there's any fluctuation in price. Now, as mentioned before, this is a demo environment. So there can be varieties in price depending on uh, the fluctuation that uh, we are seeing in the industry today. But you can now choose here which day prefer you prefer best. So uh, I put in Monday, but it could also be I want to choose another day. You have your trade lane here. You have your total price. And if you want to see the split of the price, remember the total price is, of course, one thing. But if I want to deep down in what is actually included at this price, I will be able to see that in this price, I have all my origin services. So everything that I need to pay in China when it comes to origin charges and also trucking charges. I have my ocean freight in here. And I also have my destination charges when it comes to custom clearance and even trucking charges all the way to my warehouse in Bristol. So all of these things amount to the total price that I know that is going to come on my invoice. So I choose, I select this shipment. Now I simply need to figure out who will be my buyer. So who am I exporting to? I am sending this to Bobby Parker. Bobby's contact details is as per below, his email address and phone. I click on next. I insert the details that I have currently. So I ha now I'm just going to plop in some data here. I have my quantity, I have my weight, and I have my measurements. I can put in some marks and number if I wanted to. I can put in the, the description of the goods. I can choose whatever transport documentation I want, if it should be a telex release, house bill of lading, or original bill of lading. And I can insert my PO number. The PO number is often the number that is referring to by shipper and customer. And then you click on next, you get a small summary of all the details that you have keyed in. There's the price as well. All you need to do is agree with the standard trading condition and click Confirm. And that is the simple steps that you need to take in order to place a booking on Twill. So what will happen now is that this notification here will be sent to my buyer sitting in the UK saying Jesper in China has now placed a booking on Twill. This is what he would like to export to you. As the customer in the UK wakes up, he sees these detail, he sees the price, he confirms with a little click of a button. And those two things now convert a shipment on Twill. So you can see the booking we just placed 
is on top here. It says booking initiated. And that is the first status of a booking. Now, if you want to deep dive a little bit uh, into a booking, then uh, let's uh, take this one here where you can see status is cargo delivered. Uh, it's a bit further ahead in, uh, in the, the journey. So if you click on your booking here, you will give a little a level uh, lower. So the first thing you can see here is, of course, the full track and trace visibility. So you have all the steps, all the milestones, all the data that every event happened. So this is the track and trace. And 24-7, you can, of course, log into your platform and track your cargo. Where is the latest uh, update? If I scroll down, there's a detail tab here. If I collapse this one, so I open it up, I'll have a lot of information around my shipment. So I'll be able to see my container numbers, seal numbers. I even have inserted the delivery date that I want uh, my containers to be delivered as well. You have cargo details, your supplier details, trade lanes, schedule, price, etc. If you scroll a bit down here, you will have a task bar as well and in this task bar here this is where both supplier and the customer can see what is the next task that we need to do in order to make a shipment go smoothly so you can log in and you can see export custom clearance when is that need to be done and as a customer you can also see when your supplier have done it so you have the overview to track the flow and the task that has been accomplished as well so every time a little thing has been accomplished, there will be a due date and also an action date on when it was accomplished. And as a customer, you can also be a bit uh, predictive to see, okay, what is actually required of me? So when do it will need to have my delivery instructions? When do it will need to have the commercial uh, invoice approved by me and packing list? And when do I need to settle my payments? So this becomes a little workflow tool where both supplier and customer can see, okay, what needs to be uh, done and by when. If you scroll down a little bit further, you will have the document bar here. So every documentation around the shipment will be uploaded to the platform. It starts by a commercial invoice and packing list, which will be uploaded by a supplier. Once both document has been uploaded an automated notification will go to the customer saying commercial invoice and packing list are now available for you to approve so i log on i download my commercial invoice to see what supplier has uploaded i can have a small check if the amount is correct and everything is as per agreed and on production there is a little button here says approved so I, as a customer, can now approve the commercial invoice and hopefully also approve the packing list. So we combine and we collect all the documentation online and we don't have any different versions floating around on emails or uh, hidden in folders or anything. Eventually, you will also receive your uh, invoice. So the invoice will be uploaded here. You can download it and, uh, and transfer it uh, for payment. Uh, there will also be some uh, duty and tax for certain countries. And we also have additional document slots where you can upload uh, more documentation if, uh, if you uh, wanted to. So you can have certificates or pictures or whatever you want stored in your shipment. So this is how the shipment looks like on a deep level. And now, as mentioned before, we have all the data stamps, we have all the milestones, and we store all the documentations. Now, if I wanted to find a shipment that is more than, let's say, two years old, I can go from my active shipment tab to my closed shipment tab. So all the shipment that is already closed and done on Twill, they will be automatically transferred to my closed tab. And a closed tab now works as an online archive. So if I wanted to find a two-year-old shipment, I remember the PO number of that particular shipment, I can just search here. It will pop up, I can view the shipment, and now I have all the information related to that shipment. So you have all the milestones, you have all the details, and you have all the documents that is linked to that specific shipment. So we will store the documentation for you. So for those of you who do a lot of printing or potentially have some paper file hidden in cabins or in storage room, 
that is no longer needed because everything can be uploaded to the platform and that will be stored for you. So if you need it, you can search it online. There's of course a lot more features uh, in here. And uh, yeah, if you want to explore, then uh, it's as simple as creating a, a small profile. You can start building up a company profile. You can start adding your trade lanes to see uh, the prices. We have some reporting uh, functionalities here as well, which will extract the data into an Excel format, which you can use uh, as you prefer. We have the dashboard overview here, which is giving you a helicopter view of all your shipments, your upcoming pending tasks. It will also give you a little information on when is your next shipments arriving. So that will give you a nice overview of, uh, of your whole uh, flow. And on production environment uh, as well, as I mentioned in, uh, in the beginning here, if you see from uh, the PowerPoint slide uh, screen, we have a little chat functionality on the platform, meaning that if you have any questions related to some documents or some things on the platform you're not 100% sure about, or you want an update on a certain thing, you don't need to, to send an email and wait until the office is, uh, opens in the morning. If you're sitting at home at midnight, you can open up the chat box. You can start immediately a chat conversation with one of our customer care uh, ninjas who are sitting around the globe monitoring this chat functionality and will most likely be able to answer some of the platform related uh, questions that you might have. So you now have customer service 24-5 uh, on your hand all the time, really depending on what is your need and when do you want the uh, answers to your questions. Yes, and in order to wrap it up a bit, I just want to say that um, as we just went through the, we the webinar here, uh, what you need to, of course, do now is um, figuring out what is your need. So I showed you Twill now, and that's one solution of a digital platform. But there are many out there uh, with, with different features, different trade lanes, um, different options, uh, different services. Um, so define your business needs, go out, compare them with the services and the requirements that you would like to see in a partner and make sure that your expectations are aligned with those services that they can provide, both when it comes to prices, when it comes to data visibility, and when it comes to especially information flow. Go out there, search around, figuring out what is uh, the right solution for you, explore your options. It is really as easy as just creating a profile, log in and start exploring.